In the previous two masterclasses, I showed you how to build your own navigation buttons, as we have down the bottom here, and a record counter, so we can quite easily move through our record set using these tools. But Access doesn't provide a way for you to quickly find a specific record. We've got various filtering tools up here, and uh, also on the right click of the mouse on particular fields, we can filter our record set. But there's no built-in way of quickly jumping to a record. So if you want something like that, you've got to build it yourself. I've got a demonstration here of one that I made already. And here we are, I've put it up here in the header of the form, but you can put it anywhere, it'll still work. And essentially, it provides a list of information that you can use to identify a specific record. And you can choose the record you want to see, click on it, and your form will then display that record. It's quite easy to do, and I'm going to show you how to do it now. So I'm going to move to the form that I'm going to be working in and put it into design view. Now, as I said, you can put it anywhere on your form, but I'm going to put it in the header. I've got a header section here because I created a footer and Access always creates both, but I've hidden it by making its height zero. So I can either drag the detail bar down to make it the height that I want, or I can simply click on the form header bar and over here, on the property sheet, I can just type in the height that I want. I want it to be two centimeters. Now, the only prerequisite to creating this navigation tool is that you must have fields by which you can identify the record that you want to go to. And that could be anything, really. This could be a company database, a contact database. Uh, you might decide to use the company name. In this case, it's uh, an employee database. And I'm going to use the combination of first and last name to individually identify the record that I want to go to. Now, in a large record set, it's quite possible that you could have more than one person with the same first and last name, in which case you might want to add an additional field uh, such as birth date or employee number or something like that. The other prerequisite is that your record set must include the primary key field. Now the record set that I'm showing you here is not displaying the primary key field on the form because the user in this case doesn't need to see it. I usually use an auto number for my primary key fields and it is included in the record set but it's not shown on the form. If you're not sure just go to your add existing fields button and take a look at the fields included in the record set and uh, I can see here that my employee ID field which happens to be the primary key uh, is part of that record set so that's fine. Now I'm going to use a combo box to create my go to record tool and I'm going to place it up here on the header so I need to find the combo box tool in the uh, control section here and there it is so I'll just click on that now if you've got control wizards enabled uh, the wizard will start up when you click on the form but um, because we're going to program this ourselves we don't need that uh, just cancel it and I'm going to click more or less on the uh, more or less where I need this on the uh, header and uh, there we are now the first thing I'm going to do is give it a sensible name so uh, with it selected um, I'm going to go to the other tab here you can see that access has named it automatically combo 27 I'm going to change it to uh, CBO go to record I like to use a little three-letter code uh, at the beginning of each name, which identifies the type of control that it is. 
and uh, I also want to change the label here so I'm going to click on the label and on the format tab I'll go to its caption and change that to go to record Another thing you can do if you want is add a tooltip. Now the tooltip belongs to the combo box. So I'll, I'll just select that again. Uh, on the other tab, there we are, they call it the control tip. And I'll just type go to record. Now um, I'm not sure how big I'm going to want this to be. So I won't change its size just yet but I do want to format the label. Uh, I want it to look like my other labels here. Now you can use the formatting tools that are on the format tab up here uh, to make your label look whatever way you want it to. Um, I'm going to use um, the Format Painter, this tool up here. So I'm going to select one of these labels, click on the Format Painter and click on my label. So now it's formatted the same way as the other ones. I'll just double click the lower right hand handle here that makes it the right size and uh, I'm going to stretch the label over here and double click again just to make it the right size and in the right position and um, down arrow once just to get it in the right position on the header I'll just check it out in form view Okay, that looks good. But at the moment, there's no list. That's what we've got to do next. So back in Design View, select my combo box and go to its property sheet and click on the Data tab. Make sure that Row Source Type is set to Table Stroke Query, which is the default. And the actual Row Source itself we have to define here so I'm going to click in this text box and click the Build button. And what that will do is open the Query Builder because we're going to use a query based on the same record set in order to get our list. So here we are. Here's the Query Builder. It's the same tool as you use to make queries in Access. I'll just bring this dialog box up here and uh, I've only got one table here, it's TBL Employees, and that's the table that that form is based upon. So I'm going to add it and close. I'll just expand this field list for a moment. And uh, I'm going to generate a query here. And uh, when I'm satisfied that the query creates the list that I want, um, when I close the Query Builder, Access returns the SQL statement that the Query Builder generates back to the design view of the form and uses it to generate the combo box list. So I've got to decide what fields do I need. Well, I know I need my primary key field. I mentioned that before. So I've got to double click it here and it's appeared down here in the grid. This is called the QBE grid or Query by Example grid. I want a combination of first name and last name. Now I could add both those fields, but that would make a list with two separate columns in, which is fine, but I don't want it to look like that. What I want is a single column that says last name followed by a comma and a space and first name. And I can't do that by dragging these items down into here. I need to type an expression in the top cell of the next column, the field cell, that will generate that. Um, I could type it directly in here, but I'm going to right click and zoom here just to make it easier for you to see what I'm typing. And I'll also increase the font size here. So my expression is going, going to be, I don't need to type a name for this new, uh, it's actually a calculated field. But um, I'm going to, I'm going to call it full name, followed by a colon. OK, 
Colon's important because what's to the left of the colon is the name of the new field that we're creating and what's to the right of the colon is an expression that defines the field. So I want the last name field. Now I put that in square brackets. That's out of habit. You only need square brackets if you have a space uh, in your field name or if your field name is the same as a, a reserved word which you shouldn't really use anyway uh, but I put them in anyway an and sign and then in quotes a comma and a space followed by a closing quote and another and and then first name okay I could have typed that directly into here. Uh, that just makes it a bit easier for you to see. OK. Uh, let's have a look and see what this query returns. So I'm going to hit the Run button up here. And there we are. I'll just make the column a little bit wider. So I've got my Employee ID, which is my primary key field. And there you are. You can see all the names, last name, comma space, first name. I do want to put it into alphabetical order though. That's uh, very important for the person using uh, the drop-down list. They've got to be able to find stuff easily. So I'm going to take the query back into design view. We're still in the query builder, remember? And I'm just going to click in the sort row of the new calculated column and I'm going to make it ascending. Something that I forgot to mention was You'll see that employee ID is the primary key field. If you're not sure, it's the one with the little key next to it. OK, I'm going to take this um, into datasheet view again. I'm going to run the query just to have a look, another look at it. There we are, that's fine. You can see it's all in order, alphabetically ascending, last name then first name. OK, I'm happy with that. So I can just close the query builder and Access asks me if I want to return that to the form to go for the uh, row source property. I'm going to say yes. And now you can see that in the row source property of the combo box there's a select statement which um, is the SQL statement that was generated. So um, let's have a look at my combo box in form view now. So I can drop the list but it's only showing me the first column. It's showing me that list of primary key fields. I do want to know what that value is when the user chooses it, but that's no use to the user. They don't know what those numbers mean. So I need to hide this number and show the calculated column. Now, the reason it's showing those numbers is that if you have more than one column uh, in a combo box and you haven't told Access that there's more than one column, it'll only show the first column. So we've got a couple of things to do here. Back in Design View. I'm going to the, first of all, to the Data tab of my selected combo box. The bound column is column 1. That's important. That's going to be the value of the combo box when the user makes a choice. But if I go to the Format tab, it thinks there's only one column there. I'm going to tell it there are two columns. When there's more than one column, you need to tell it how wide you want each column. If you don't, it makes its own decision. But I actually want to hide the first column. So I'm going to give it a column width of zero. Now I'm going to hit a semicolon. That's zero centimeters, or if you're working in inches, it would be zero inches, of course. Um, I'm working in centimetres here because uh, I'm working in Europe, but if you're American, you're working in inches, just use the appropriate uh, width that you want. So I think I'm probably going to need four centimetres for the width of the second column. So I'm going to type a four there. If I click somewhere else, you'll see that it puts the CMs for centimetre in there. We'll do the same for inches. I'm going to go and take a look. 
that's fine you can't see the first column it is there though but it has a width of zero but i can see my combo box isn't quite wide enough yet so if i go back into design view and i'm just going to make the width of the combo box which is currently three centimeters i'm going to make it four and take another look there we are okay so just scroll down because there's a lot of items in this list i don't think there's a limit to the number of items you have in a combo box list there's over a thousand here and because they're in alphabetical order the user can just click on the combo box and start typing and it will scroll to the uh, appropriate item that's really important that we have it in alphabetical order so it'll do that okay now we have to write some code so that when the user makes a choice the combo box will cause the form to go find that record we're going to use an event procedure so i'm going to go to the event tab of my combo box and i'm going to use the after update event so i click on after update i click the build button and choose code builder and okay it takes me into the visual basic editor i've actually got uh, some code already here and this is the code that uh, runs my uh, record counter and my navigation buttons but you'll see it's created uh, an empty event procedure for the after update event of the go to record combo box now the first thing i'm going to do is to type on error resume next which is an error handler very simple one but uh, it'll just make sure that access doesn't crash uh, if something goes wrong now we're going to work with the record set here and we need to declare the record set object so i'm going to call it rst for record set and declare it now dim is the word we use when we are declaring a variable rst as object I'm declaring it as an object because I'm going to make use of the record set clone object, uh, which is essentially a copy of the form's record set, which exists in memory when the form is open. Now I'm going to tell it what RST stands for. I'm using the set keyword there, which you all always have to use when you um, put a value into an object variable set rst equals me so that's the form itself dot and record set clone now the record set clone is as i said it's a copy of the forms record set and you can actually manipulate it and move about in it and what we're going to do is we're going to tell the record set clone to actually find the record that corresponds to what the user chose from the combo box and then we're going to synchronize the record set clone with the form's own record set so the first thing we need to do is uh, use the record set clone to actually go and find the record we need rst dot find first now you might have wondered when I typed the dot after RST, why didn't I get a list of things? Well, that's because it's declared as an object and it could be just about anything. So um, Access doesn't know what sort of list to show me, so it hasn't shown me anything at all. Find first, we've got to give it an expression now, which um, it can use to know what it's looking for. So, uh, and that will be a, a, a SQL statement so it goes in quotes because it's text employee ID which is the name of my primary key field I'm actually going to put that in square brackets because I like putting 
field names in square brackets, equals. Now what is it equal to? Well, it's equal to the primary key value for the name that the user chose. So that's the value of the combo box. So I use an and here, me dot cbo go to record dot value. So essentially, that is going to say, after the user's made a choice, something like employee ID equals 69 or whatever. When this particular code statement is executed, the record set clone has gone to that particular value. And we have an imaginary bookmark which is defines the position in the record set. So what we need to do to synchronize the two is to tell it that the forms bookmark is now the same as the record set clones bookmark. Quite straightforward. Me dot bookmark equals rst dot bookmark. And again, I have to take it on trust that uh, it's okay to type bookmark here because it hasn't given me a list. Okay. That should be everything we need. As always, debug, compile, and save. Always do that before you test new code. Because if you have done something that hasn't been picked up by compiling and that were to crash access, now that's very unlikely, but it can happen, then at least you've saved your work. Okay, I'm going to switch back into access and take my form into form view and see what happens. I'm going to make a choice here. Let's scroll down a bit. How about Sarah Havel? And there we are. The form has jumped to that particular one. Try something else. There we are. There's something else I need to do to refine this a little bit though. If I move to another record, you'll notice that although the record that is being shown on the form is changing, what's shown up here in the Go to Record tool is still the last one that I chose, or if I hadn't chosen anything, it would be blank, which is fine, but this just doesn't look right here. So what I need to do is synchronize the two in the other direction. And I'm going to do that with the current event of the form. Now the current event is an event that happens when the form opens and also when the user moves from record to record. So if I go back here into design view, I'll select my form. I can do this by clicking this little rectangle here where the rulers meet. Uh, and you'll notice that I've already got a current event here. Uh, but if I just click here and click the build button, I can go in and edit, uh, edit that. And I'll go down the bottom here, put a new line in. And very simply, I'm going to type me dot cpo go to record dot value equals me dot employee id dot value so very simply all that's going to do is to make the value of the combo box the same as the value of the form Again, debug, compile, save, and uh, switch back into access, and open up the form here. So let's have a look. Let's go to a specific record. Okay. And as I navigate through the records, you'll notice that the Go to Record tool is changing to be the same as the 
record that is shown here on the form. And if I go to a new record, it blanks this one. And I can take myself to any record I want and move through the record set and everything remains synchronized. There we are, job done. We've got a really useful go to record tool. If you want to see a written illustrated copy of this masterclass, go to my website at www.fontstuff.com and you'll find it there along with a copy of this database that you can download and a PDF of the masterclass as well.